I woke up with the idea today that I want to make my own duffel bag. I've made like little bags that I use for like pencil cases and like makeup bags. Nothing as ambitious as a duffel bag. I'm bringing you guys along with me today to go through the process of making a duffel bag. I'm doing no pattern. I haven't even planned out what I'm going to do. I just am going to go buy some materials and hope it's enough. It's like, why go buy a duffel bag for say 50 bucks or whatever? Or you can spend the same amount, if not more, and make it yourself. I think I'm gonna go with the spending way more time and making it myself option. <laughs> so let's go to Spotlight. <laughs> okay. We've got a problem. So I just moved to Australia, so I don't have a car right now. And I was going to borrow my cousin's, but she let another friend borrow her car today. So we got to take the bus. There's no issue with taking the bus per se. It just is a little bit more complicated on like getting places. Already complicating the journey. I'll bring you back in two hours when I go on the bus. Okay, bus leaves at 112. It is 1255 right now. I have PTV card, technically I have two in case one doesn't have enough money on it because I don't actually know which one has money on it. I've got 50 bucks, hopefully it's underneath that. Otherwise I'll just use my card. The bag that I'm putting everything in once I buy it. So yeah, let's head over to the bus. Every time I take the bus, something goes wrong, right? I was not paying attention and I look up and we're already past the stop, so I was Because the bus doesn't stop unless you like press the button, you know? Then I got off at the next stop, so now I have a 10 minute walk to get to the spotlight. Yay! That one. One thing that I have to say about taking the bus and like things not working like you plan them to, it actually works out better a lot of the time because then you just get more adventure. So I don't know, sometimes taking the bus is actually a little bit more adventure and I get to see different things that if I was driving, I would just kind of take for granted. I think it's kind of cool. Ooh. We did it. And I was listening to such good music. I honestly, I save all this music and I only listen to like the recent ones I saved. I don't listen to all of them. And I should really listen to all of them because all of them are like, wow, oh, so good. All right, fabric store haul. I got two receipts too, because I bought them separately. Don't know why. One of them was $15, the other one was $16. It's like not as much as I thought it would be. I thought it was gonna be like 50. I think there was also a deal on the canvas as well. I think it was like 40% off, so that kind of helped the price. I got a 56 centimeter long red zipper, three meters worth of the like handle fabric, but it's kind of thin. It's not as thick as I would have wanted it to, but it matched this red, so that's why I ended up getting it. For the style of the bag, I ended up deciding to do like the tan canvas with the red straps, just kind of as a pop of color. I was scrolling through Pinterest on the bus while I was over there and I found this really cute bag that was like a Taylor Swift merch bag. I'm thinking of doing something similar to that, but like obviously making it Ellie Magelli merch. No, nah, I'm not making merch yet. I don't even have a thousand subscribers, so. <laughs> Gonna eat some shapes, then get started on making this duffel bag. Just for some context on why I'm getting a new duffel bag, this was the duffel bag that I was using. Yeah, I need a new one. I love the shape and I love the size of it, but just the fabric needs some, you know, fixing. Can you see the vision? <laughs> Okay, so I just cut out the pieces for the duffel bag. I traced a duffel bag that I already have, the one that I'm revamping and all that stuff. I just pretty much made like one big rectangle and then I wanted some pockets on the side where the straps go down. So I also cut out these little eight inch by eight inch squares as well. The first thing that I wanna do would be sewing the pockets with the straps, maybe tackling the zipper. I'm gonna do the sides, which are like the circle shapes. I'm gonna do those at the end. 
because I want to make sure they fit perfectly. So I'm going to use some math in order to figure out the circumference and the radius, diameter, all that good stuff in order to make the perfect circle. Who thought that you actually would need math when you're older, but it would be for sewing and not for daily life. Time to bring out the sewing machine. Let's get sewing on the strap. James is on the phone, everybody. James, say hi. Oh, I forgot I have headphones in, sorry. He said hi. So now I'm just gonna do some outlines on this pocket, just so the edges don't fray because they are already fraying from this cutting. One pocket done, another one to go. Wow, the song that the editor put in, so good. Okay, I know I said I don't measure, but I'm gonna measure this part just because I want it to look nice at the end. And if it's crooked, it would still look nice, but I think it'd just be a little bit better if it was like looking good, you know? So this is the bag as it's laid flat. Here's pocket one, and then here's the second pocket. All I'm gonna do is measure it to make sure that they're the same distance. So the bottom bits of the pockets down, and then maybe do like a little bit of a fold over. So it would just like look a little bit cleaner. Next, I'm gonna change into a red thread. So these straps down. But this is what I made for the pockets where I'm just folding over a little bit of the top just so when you look at it as a pocket, you're not seeing the raw edge, you're seeing like a folded bit of the edge, so. Yeah, I'm just doing it to the top and the bottom of the pocket because the sides will be covered by the strap, so it doesn't matter. My bobbin is really close to running out on the white thread and I'm hoping that I'm timing it perfectly because I need to switch over to red soon. You know how I know this canvas is thick? That just bent the needle so bad, oh my God. Okay, first mistake. Uh, I didn't realize this mistake was gonna be so early on in the freaking. I just sewed the open part of the pocket closed. So let's seam rip that. <laughs> I hate seam ripping. I hate and love this thing. I hate it every time I have to use it, but it does make everything easier, so. Okay, now I'm sewing the right part of the pocket. I hope. If I didn't mention it before, I'm using my on sewing machine and the one I have normally or the one I had normally, it would like thread it automatically for you, but this one you have to do it yourself. Yeah, I was very privileged before I have to say, but this humbles me. I did it twice. Ha. <laughs> this is why I need a pattern. Honestly, I make stupid mistakes. At least I realized before I finished this tiny little bit. <laughs> if I have extra bulb and at the end of this, the universe is on my side. I think that's all I have to sell. I did have enough bobbin. Let's freaking go. It's turning around for me now. <laughs> now I'm thinking ahead and I'm gonna stop sewing here. So I'm gonna sew like, along these two lines here, but I'm gonna stop early so it gives me enough space to like do the zipper. Okay, so we have the straps sewed down and they actually, it looks pretty good. I mean, I sewed pretty straight. So now I'm going to add this zipper on. I feel kind of okay with zippers. I mean, I've sewed a lot on small bags, but this is a bigger bag. So just gonna make sure that I'm doing the right thing. The bag so far is looking a little bit wrinkled because I didn't iron at the beginning because I forgot. I'm just gonna iron it really quickly just before I put the zipper on because I want it to be as perfect as I possibly can. Also, I don't like using zipper puts. I don't know why, but it's just not the vibe. Okay, so that's that part of the zipper. I'm gonna iron it down and then do a top stitch on it just so it has a better finish. While we're waiting for the iron to heat up, this is a good time to stretch. So everyone who sews just is like this the whole time. You know what I mean? It's important to do some stretches while your iron warms up. Pro tips with Ellie. 
Okay, I feel like it's starting to take some form now. You can kind of see that it's a double bag. Now I just need to cut out some circles for this. Hello, it's voiceover Ellie. So this is where we're throwing in some math into the whole thing. So I used the equation circumference equals two pi radius. And I figured out the circumference just by measuring with a tape measure and then divided by two pi to find the radius is 6.13. So I just went around the circle and measured out that 6.13 and cut it out as a circle. Oh my god, the sunset outside is so pretty. I'm almost done with the bag, but I just wanted to go look at the sunrise, or sunset. How pretty. cute it's also way bigger than i thought it was gonna be i'm a big girl and this is pretty big all right guys that's the end of this video about how i made this duffel bag I'm so, so proud of how it turned out. I mean, I didn't expect it, one, to be this big. Two, it was a little bit easier than I thought. Like, I thought I was gonna mess up a lot more. I mean, at the beginning, I did mess up like twice in a row, but it all turned out pretty well. I'm gonna have some pictures of this bag up on my Instagram. Links are right here, where you can see some better pictures of it because I ran out of sunlight to take some photos today. I'm super happy how it turned out and I'm excited to use it because tomorrow I'm gonna be going to go see my mom's side of the family. Now I have a duffel bag that's big enough to take all my stuff for the weekend. If you like this kind of content, then please give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you're interested in seeing some more videos similar to this. Much love.